The ability to communicate between two digital devices becomes more challenging the further the devices are apart. Thankfully, we've developed wireless technologies like Bluetooth or Zigbee or 802.11, but we're going to talk about a solution that allows two devices that are wired together to be able to communicate when they're up to 150 feet apart. The Jarvi extender is just a device right here with an RJ45 connector receptacle and then a buffer. You place the extender on both sides of preferably a twisted pair cable. Right here we have a Cat6 or a 100 foot Cat6e ethernet cable. And you can see the fact that the cable has the RJ45 plug makes it easily connectable to the RJ45 connector receptacle on the extender. This was done intentionally to just make it easy to plug cables in and pull cables out very quickly in one solution. You can find cables of multiple feet um, and for relatively cheap. And so designing the extender to mate with a uh, ethernet cable was very intentional. Over here we have uh, two devices. This one is an Atmega 2560, which serves as an I2C master. Uh, it's connected to one of the extenders, and then the extender is connected to a 100-foot Cat6e cable, and then terminated to another extender, and then the extender is jumpered to the I2C slave, which is an Arduino Uno. And then we have an analog discovery device, which just serves as an analogic analyzer, just to eavesdrop on that I2C bus so we can see the actual messages that the master is sending to the slave. So the master sends a couple of bytes, J-A-R-V-I-E, and only the I is uh, lowercase. All of, the all of the characters are uppercase. Every time a byte is received, on the slave in the L LED on the slave blinks. So looks like communication is successful, right? But let's go over and look at the logic analyzer and see what messages the master is actually sending to the slave. So here I'm gonna kind of, um, sorry it's shaky, but I'm going to kind of narrow this down so we can capture it in the frame of my phone. Right here is Waveforms, which is just the UI that partners with the analog discovery hardware to just graphically show what the analog discovery hardware is actually measuring. And so here in the Waveforms, we've created an I2C bus. The clock signal, which is driven by the master device of the 2560, is on DIO8 of the Waveform hardware. And then SDA is connected to DIO0. Then we've told the logic analyzer to trigger every falling edge of the clock. Um, and then when we look at what the logic analyzer is receiving, we can see it's actually seeing the I2C protocol. It's seeing the start bit, which is over here. The start indication of the bus from the master. It's receiving the address byte to the slave. And then we're actually then receiving the byte that's sent from the master to the slave. And so we can see we're receiving the characters that we are trying to send, which is J, A, R, V, lowercase i, E. And then we see the stop indication of the bus. Now let's make sure that we're in fact sending I squared C messages over a hundred feet of cable to a slave device. So let's pull out one of the I2C signals. This should be the clock, I believe. We can see that the LED on the slave device is no longer blinking, indicating that it's not receiving messages from the master device. And then if we go back and look at the logic analyzer or what the, what the uh, analog discovery device is measuring, we can see that the logic analyzer is no longer being triggered. This shows that when we remove the signal, the messages are no longer being received by the slave. 
But let's plug in the I squared C signal or clock signal back into the slave device. And we can see that the LED resumes blinking, indicating that the master is actually sending I squared C messages through 100 feet of cable all the way to the slave device. And if we go back and look at the logic analyzer, it's tricking again, and we see our bytes, J, A, R, V, I, E, 